For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, to discuss his column titled, Murder of Nogutula Mabaso, Another Abashali Killing with Impunity. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So if the police in attacking uh, the group, Abashali Basem John Dolo, are acting as illegally as you suggest, how has it continued for so long? And Abashali is a small group, uh, comparatively speaking. What has the ANC got to fear from this group? Well, I think it's the local ANC who are doing this. Uh, and uh, Mr. Ngubane, who I don't think he's a councillor, but he's a leading ANC official. And those people want the land for commercial development, the land that is where the Ekanana commune of Abakhlali is. And they want them removed because they want to develop it for private profits and things like that. Whereas these people from Awakhali believe that they are, have a right to land under the constitution and the only way they can get it is by occupying it. Now, if it's illegal, I'm not sure it's illegal, there are procedures for removing them. You don't, you're not allowed to kill people or just drive them off. You have to get particular orders to do that. And what they fear is that what I think ANC fears is the example of Abakhlali, is that people who, there are lots of landless people in South Africa, if they see the success of what is being done in the Ekanana commune, they may, they may do what, they may want to join it, or they may do what they are doing in that commune in other parts of KZN and the country. So they fear it, but also these people are very, very dedicated. If you read some of the stories about Nokotula Mabaso, she's just an ordinary woman, young woman who had bad experiences in her youth. And then she found a home, but also a vocation, a, a thing to do with her life in this commune. And she was very, very dedicated. And I think that a lot of people um, must be moved by that story and the sadness of her dying. Another thing that happened there is she's supposed to be a state witness or, or, or potential state witness for the murder of Ayanda Ngila a few weeks earlier. So, you know, they have a lot of reasons for attacking uh, Abakhali, but also a particular person like Nogatula uh, Mabaso. So now, Professor, you're also saying that the police are just failing to do basic detective work. What is basic detective work? I'm not saying every member of the police, but basic detective work. You know, I used to teach criminology, but to refresh my memory, I googled what is basic detective work. And really what happens is that when there's been a crime, you have to get to the crime scene very quickly before things are moved or uh, taken away that may point to who the killer was or who the perpetrator of the crime was. You have to get to the crime scene, uh, take fingerprints, collect cartridges of uh, bullets, talk to witnesses who are around there. Because if you come too late, people would have left and some people who are implicated may have removed some incriminating material. Once you have been to the scene, you make a preliminary assessment of what has happened. You get samples of things that are relevant that they may have touched nearby their fingerprints and so forth. Then you, you, you've got an idea of who the witnesses may be and you interview the various witnesses check whether the story makes sense, whether they conflict one with one another, whether they corroborate. If it points to one person or small group of people, you then uh, may decide to uh, arrest them straight away because you can hold them, I think it's 48 hours for questioning, or 24 hours. And uh, you gather more information, assess 
whether there's a basis for a charge. But you have to keep it, you have to move very fast because if you can only hold them for 24 hours, uh, in the old days or even today, they still have to beat them up and they want to do that quickly because they have to let them out. But in the way I believe it should be done, they should be questioning, interrogating these people to see whether their answers are satisfactory. If they were reported to be present at that place, why were they there? They must find these things out and they must see whether what they heard from other witnesses people, how it conflicts or, uh, with that of the suspects and check out what is the story that seems most um, likely to be true and then follow up, gather all other evidence that's necessary, like ballistic evidence. If these guys have got guns, they've still got the guns, then test them against uh, whatever uh, other evidence is found there, bullets, in Nokatula Mabaso's body or scattered around there and so forth. So lastly, Professor, you say there ought to be more support for this group, Abashali, and you go as far as naming a number of organizations. Why should they publicly support Abashali? What rights do you have uh, to call them out, especially the Archbishop Mahoba? Well, let me come to the Archbishop later. I've got a good relationship with him, or let's say I had a good relationship before this. <laughs> but, um, you know, these organizations, they're not silent. Nelson Mandela Foundation, Ahmed Kathrada Foundation, they speak on a lot of things. They have a lot to say. I'm sure they've spoken about you. I'm sure Nelson Mandela Foundation's spoken about Ukraine. Ahmed Kathrada Foundation speaks about a lot of very, very important causes, which are as important uh, um, or equally important is the Abakhali murders. Why don't they say something? Some of these people are comrades of mine who I worked with in the struggle. I can't understand why they are silent. Why don't they say something about this? What is their interest in letting the police or uh, not do their job or, or have these people from a local ANC implicated in murdering people. Why don't they do it? With regard to Archbishop Mahoba, I regard him as an exemplary priest in South Africa. And consequently, I hold him up to standards that I don't hold up everyone who is a leader in religious faith. But what I said about uh, the, the church is equally applicable to Muslims and uh, Jews and other religions in South Africa that they ought to be, this is the country which lives under a constitution which we all uh, who believe in freedom want to uphold. They sh should want this to stop and they should say something about it. In the case of Archbishop Mahoba, he, he's a very articulate person. He's a person who's made a number of statements that are based on uh, an ethic that is exemplary, that we all can learn from. Why is he silent on the, since 2009, if I Googled correctly, um, about, under his speeches and statements? I believe that we need to hear voices like his and many others about this, because we've got to build up some level of public outrage about what's happening. Because what is happening there is a scandal. I mean, it's a scandal that anyone dies, but 23 people die and there are hardly any consequences. The alleged killer of uh, one of the Abakhali people was denied bail, which is a, a good development that uh, the Lokatula Mabasa was supposed to be one of the people giving evidence against his getting bail because they feared for the women uh, who uh, had witnessed him allegedly killing Ayanda and Gila. Now he was denied bail for something else yesterday. So maybe, you see, as I said, one mustn't blacken the name of every police uh, man and woman in Cato Manor Police Station or anywhere else, even if most of them are not investigating these things. Some people are and some of the prosecutors are doing their job properly. 
but I believe everyone must do so because we want our constitution to live every day for every person, rich or poor. Thank you. There was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's polity about his column titled Murder of Nogutula Mabaso, Another Abashali Killing with Impunity.